The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast program in radio history. And Signal Gasoline is tops, too. Tops in quality. It takes extra quality, you know, to give you extra mileage. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies friendly dealer-owned Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. The Girl Next Door. It was, in a small but very special way, a moment of triumph for Alma Germain. On the surface, of course, the matter was pretty small and unimportant. Nothing to compare with ten years ago, when she was a national celebrity, when her every move was recorded faithfully the next morning in syndicated columns, to be read and appreciated by 30 million movie fans. But the satisfaction, the rising warm feeling inside was there. And Alma smiled across the black ebony desk at the puzzled face of Oscar Dahl, the producer. Leaned back in the Chinese red leather sofa and flicked an ash into an onyx tray at her elbow. Alma, honey, maybe I'm subnormal this morning, but I'd swear I heard you say... I simply don't want the part, Oscar. Is there anything so puzzling about that? You don't want the part. I don't want the part, period. Mind if I ask why? <laughs> It'd be very simple, Oscar. Six months ago, you gave me a dozen good reasons why I should never act again. Oh, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. I retired at the top seven years ago while I was the girl next door. No, to love from Maine to California. Yes, I know. But I told you this part has nothing to do with the girl next door. This is a mature role. You're not an ingenue any longer, my dear. You're somebody's mother. <laughs> and don't tell me you sat in a dark corner for six months and came to a reasonable conclusion, because I know better. Nobody, get it, nobody in this crazy town had more genuine reverence for a fast dollar than Alma Germain. There's only one reason you turned down 2500 a week. Oh? Somebody's made a better offer, and I think I know who. Who? Neil Roberts. You're guessing, dear. You deny it? Well, not exactly. What makes you think it's Neil? Observation, my dear Watson. Mm. I've seen you out with a guy. He's as dull as they come, but he's got money and runs a newspaper. When I add that to the fact that you're stone broke, I smell orange blossoms and hear the wedding march from the distance. What makes you think I'm broke? I got that from the detective. Detective? <laughs> Surprise, honey. What do you mean, detective? A private eye, Neil's sister, hired a month ago. He was around asking questions about your background. She's got her nerve. Oh, she's got more than that, Angel. Whether you know it or not, she owns that newspaper her brother operates, watches him like a hawk, gives him the go-ahead before he ever makes a move. She has nothing to say about whom he married. Oh, you just don't know Louise Roberts. If you ask me, honey, I don't think she'd like you for a sister-in-law. Now, if you act sensibly and take this job I'm offering you for a solid 2500 a week for the run of the picture, well, after all, there are other actresses in town. Then by all means, find yourself one, Oscar. I told you I'm through with pictures. Are you through with those cars or that 15-room house and the swimming pool? <laughs> of course not. Okay, Alma. <laughs> it's too bad, though, this part was made for you. And I hate to say it, honey, but I think you'll find the role of Mrs. Neil Roberts a little bit tougher to play. Oh, 
Wilma. Do you mean it? Of course I do, Neil. Now let's dance, shall we? Wait a minute. Why, I, I can't believe it. Then I'll say it again. I love you very much, darling. Uh, and I intend to marry you. Well, but the last time I proposed, you said I didn't have a prayer. I changed my mind, darling. You wore me down. Oh, oh, oh is that it? <laughs> you know, you know, I feel like standing on top of this table and shouting. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Tell them the girl next door is going to be Mrs. Neil Roberts. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? To me, at least, you are the girl next door. You know, I think I fell in love with you the first time I stood at my window and saw you over in your garden. You took your time telling me. Well, I don't know. I, I had no idea you'd take me seriously. You were so famous and pretty and... Well, I made a career of it, darling. Well, but you were more than that, Alma. I'm aware of it, you know. The real Alma Germain. Your charities, the things you've done for other people. You're sweet, Neil. Now, let's dance, shall we? Dance? Oh, but I've got to tell people. I want Louise to know. Does she have to know, Neil, tonight? Well, why not? She'll want to talk to you tomorrow, of course. <sighs> yes, of course. Uh, Neil, why don't you call Louise? Tell her I'd be delighted to have her over tomorrow afternoon round three. Fine. I know we'll have a lot to talk about. <laughs> Uh, nice to see you, Louise. Do sit down. I'll ring for tea. Or would you prefer something else? Nothing, thank you. And I'd rather stand, Alma. Neil tells me you're engaged. Yes, last night. Rather sudden, isn't it? Oh, do you think so? He's been proposing for over a year. And you turned him down until you found yourself up against it financially. Right? I suppose your detective told you that. In a few years, I'm turning full control of the paper over to Neil. That's quite a responsibility. And he'll need a wife who can help him shoulder it. Frankly, Alma, you're not exactly what I had in mind. Oh? What did you have in mind? Certainly not a woman six years older than he is, who's marrying him for his money. You've never liked me, have you, Louise? My personal dislikes don't enter into it. I love my brother, Alma. Well, he loves me. He's in love with a shadow. With that wholesome, charitable little character you used to play on the screen. The girl next door. And you resent that? I resent hypocrisy. Charities, indeed. Money donated in your name by your gentleman friend. Listen to me, Louise. You might just as well understand this right now. I will not give Neil up under any circumstances. I may have something to say about that. I'll find a way to prevent this... this incredible marriage if it's the last thing I do. With the prologue of The Girl Next Door, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange story by The Whistler. But now a message especially for you drivers who have new cars or expect to be getting one. Just any motor oil won't do, you know, for today's high-efficiency motors. No, sir. They need special protection against corrosion, wear, and carbon if they're to give you the long, trouble-free service you have a right to expect. That's why Signal has brought out a new and finer motor oil, especially created to give modern motors this extra protection. Of course, Signal Premium has 100% pure paraffin base. But in addition, a total of five scientific new compounds have been added to Signal Premium motor oil, which by actual test keeps motors six times cleaner and reduces cylinder wear one-third. Get that, motors actually stay six times cleaner and cylinder wear is reduced one-third with Signal Premium Motor Oil. So if you want to keep the performance of your car young, make your next oil change a change for the better. Switch to the new type Signal Oil. That's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium Motor Oil. And now back to the whistler. Lines are drawn, aren't they, Alma? Louise Roberts knows you're marrying Neil for his money, and she's going to move heaven and earth to prevent it. 
you feel sure that all the detectives her wealth can hire won't be able to discredit you, won't discover a thing about your carefully concealed past, your life before you became a movie star. You decide to let things lie quietly for a few days. And then, a week later, you drop over to the Roberts' home next door, smile pleasantly at Mrs. Ridley, the housekeeper, as she admits you. Good afternoon, Mrs. Ridley. Oh, Mr. Main, come in, won't you? Mr. Neal's working up in his study. Oh, I hear Miss Roberts has gone away. Yes, till Monday. <laughs> Maybe that'll give me a little time with Neil. I've hardly seen him the last few days. Oh, I know, and I think it's just awful. She's gone out of her way to keep him busy. If you ask me, she's jealous. Oh, why? Oh, she's too fond of him to say anything, but the way she looks when he mentions you, like she wanted to... Well, if it was me, I'd marry him right now while she's gone. Oh, I think I can cope with it. Well, just the same, I wish for your sake she'd stay in Indiana. Indiana? Yes. Is that where she went? Why, well, I thought you knew. Mrs. Ridley, you're sure that... Well, I saw the plane ticket. But why? Why would she go there? What business, I suppose. She... Oh, are you all right, Miss Jermaine? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm all right. Elmer, is that you? Oh, yes, darling. Well, you know how it is, dear. That tyrant sister of mine keeps my nose to the grind. Doesn't so. she, though? <laughs> ah, but she's an angel. I'm lost without him. Yeah, how about some tea or something, Mrs. Ridley? Yes, sir. Miss Jermaine should use a cup. Mm-hmm. Now then, darling. Neil, I want to be married right away. What? But we plan next month. Please, let's get married now. Now? Tomorrow. Oh, but Louise won't be back till the day after. It only takes two of us, dear. Oh, well, Alma, I couldn't do that to my sister. Why, dear? She's taking our marriage so hard. Why prolong it? It could be all over by the time she gets back. You think it's better? It's kinder. Kinder. Well, that's so like you, Alma. We can have dinner with... With Ruth and Jerry, perhaps. Then it won't seem furtive. Tomorrow night we can fly to Yuma. Well, all right, if you say so. Neil. Neil, darling. Elma. You're such an angel, Neil. You'll never know what you've done for me. No, Alma. Neil doesn't know what he's done for you. Doesn't realize that there might be some hidden meaning in Louise's sudden trip to Indiana. But you know the meaning of that trip, don't you, Alma? You know exactly what Louise might discover and exactly how your own position will be threatened if the scandal concerning you and the late James Choate comes to light. And that's why you've made up your mind, Alma, about your marriage to Neil. Louise loves her brother. She'd never spoil his happiness by exposing you. You're counting on that as you rush the plans for the wedding and phone your friend, Ruth Forbes, and begin plans for an informal barbecue out by your swimming pool. And then the following afternoon... Mr. May? <laughs> yes? Would you like to check on the table now? Oh, oh all right, all right. I've finished my swim. Is it five o'clock? Just about, miss. Oh, I had no idea. Toss me that towel, will you, Dora? Here you are, miss. Oh, thanks. Probably shouldn't have gone for a swim. Oh, so heavenly. <sighs> Let's see. Oh, yes. The table looks lovely, Dora. Oh, thank you, miss. I brought down the fire lighter. Shall I start the charcoal? No, never mind. I'll do that. Is there anything else at all, miss? You know, I'm going to the movies tonight with Mrs. Ridley. Oh, that's right. No, Dora, I think that's everything. If the Forbes come before you leave, send them down here. All right, Miss, I'll tell you. Dora, where's that lighter you brought? Oh, never mind, Dora, I see you. Oh, I say, Dora. She's gone, Alma. What? Louisa, I didn't know that you... No one does. I just arrived. We, uh, we didn't expect you until... Late tomorrow. Yes, I know. But it didn't take me long to find what I was looking for. In Indiana. I don't follow you. No, I followed you. Right from the time you made a mistake in a magazine interview. You mentioned a town in Indiana. So, of course, you flew right down there, the busy little bee. I was busy, all right, reading old newspaper files. 
That's how I learned about James Choate. Well, what if you did? So he was found dead in a burning shack. That doesn't prove anything. Oh, did I miss something? That isn't what I read at all. But what... No, I read about Choate being found in a hospital in a very critical condition. They were trying to contact his wife, a pretty 17-year-old named Alma. You lied. He died in that fire. I saw him. I assume from your agitation that you set the fire. What are you saying? Jim's dead. You can't prove anything, Louise. You're trying to keep me from Neil, but you can't do it. He'll believe me. You say Jim's dead. Yes, I... I suppose he is, in a way. What do you mean? He's in a state institution. He didn't die. No, Alma. Your husband didn't die. Louise, you haven't told anyone about this. You haven't... I've told no one. I'll make some excuse to Neil, I mean. I'll, I'll give him up to you if you'll just keep this to yourself. He'll never quite be all mine again. I can't forgive you for that, Alma. You don't want a scandal. You know you don't. What difference does it make now after you've done to me? I'm going to show you up, Alma, tomorrow on page one. No, you can't do that. I won't let you. No one lets me, Alma. I do as I please. No. Do you hear? This is one time you won't. Alma, leave. stop it. What are you... Alma! <laughs> <sighs> You stand there, Alma, watching at the edge of the pool. The club-ended firelighter clutched in your hand as Louise, stunned by the blow, struggles feebly in the deep water. Help. Alma, help! Help me! You're, you, you're letting me drown! I hope you do. I want you to drown, Louise. I want you to. <laughs> And you don't lift a hand, do you, Alma? As Louise continues her frantic, bewildered efforts for a moment and then sinks below the surface and floats there, a quiet, dark shadow in the pretty blue oval of your pool. And then slowly your blind, unreasoning hatred passes. And something far off wakens you to the danger of your position. The others, Alma, your guests, they've arrived. They'll be coming down here. You're panicky now, and your only thought is to conceal what you've done, to get Louise's body out of sight. You look around wildly. Behind you is the open door of the bathing cabana. With a last shattering effort, you drag the wet, sprawling shape from the pool over to the cabana and thrust it inside. You're slamming the door shut as the others come down the walk. Oh, to join darling. You. Oh, Ruth, Jerry. Hi, Alma. Aren't you people early? Maybe a little. Neil came and got us. He's bringing the drink down. Well, darling, what's wrong? You look exhausted. <laughs> well, I didn't realize the time. I, I was swimming and when I heard you coming. Say, I... I wouldn't mind to swim myself. How about you, Ruth? Oh, love it. Have we time, darling? Why, well, I suppose so. Only it's silly of me, but I locked the key inside the cabana. All the suits are in there. Oh, I have a key. You want? Remember? You gave me one so we could use the pool when you're away. I think it's here in my purse. Look, really, there isn't time. The charcoal's ready. Well, you know how it is. We'll stay. Yes, well, I mean... here we are, everybody. Ah. 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 Or tall. Well, oh. maybe you could persuade Alma to allow us to swim, Neil. No, she being selfish. Mm. I think she must have a man locked in the cabana. <laughs> Jerry. Uh. Oh, don't pay any attention to him, darling. Just a joke. Of course, we won't swim if you'd rather not. Well, here, have a drink instead. Oh, thanks, uh. Neil. <laughs> and Alma, don't worry about that man in there. Your secret's safe with us. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Alma, for the first time in your life, you have to do some real acting. To be the easy, gracious hostess. And to avoid that questioning look in Neil's eyes. You can't announce the wedding plans now, can you? Secretly, you curse that first wave of panic that blinded you to the easy way out. To the simple fact that it could have looked like an unfortunate accident. But now you can't use that explanation, can you? They'll know the time of death, Alma. The police can determine that. So your removal of the body will point to one thing only, the guilty knowledge of murder. Your desperate purpose now is to get your guests away from here. Make some excuse to send them home so you can think. Finally, you manage it. And as they're leaving, it's Ruth who unknowingly suggests a way you, out. Thanks for out of this Wonderful. world. Well, <laughs> so long, Alma. Good night, Jerry. Oh, it's been delightful, darling. Even if we are kicked out at 8.30, but I thought you were going to tell them our big news. I'm sorry, Neil. I've an awful headache. Oh, you've certainly been edgy. And what about the big news? 
news? Yes, what are you talking yeah, about? What is some it? other time? Oh, yes. you've been completely frustrating this evening, darling. Next time I want to swim, I'll use Neil's pool. Neil's pool? Yes, Neil's pool. Good idea. Oh, she's just being cruel, honey. <laughs> hey, Neil, you're driving us? Be right with you. Oh, right. darling. Bye. Oh, dear. Dearest, what is it? Why didn't you tell them about us? Neil, I... I was wrong. We can't get married without telling Louise. But you said... Yes, I know, I know. But we really should wait. I've thought about it, dear. Now, run along. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, you think it's best. I know it is. I want to do the right thing. Of course you do, Elba. That's why I love you. Yes, Alma. Ruth gave you an idea when she mentioned Neil's swimming pool. Neil and Louise's pool right next door. The diving accident story you overlooked before will work now if Louise's body is found there. Just another swimmer dead in the water with a bruise on her head. It's a terrible ordeal, isn't it, Alma? But somehow in the darkness you manage it. Get Louise over to her yard, change her into one of her own swimming suits, and ease her into the water. A short time later, you answer the insistent ringing of your front doorbell. Why, Mrs. Ridley. Oh, Miss Jermaine, please come quickly. Something terrible happened. The police are at our place. The police? Yes, it's Miss Roberts. She's dead. <laughs> Lieutenant, I don't understand you. If you say it wasn't an accident... I didn't say for certain that it wasn't an accident, Miss Germain. Still, I'm hard to satisfy you. Uh, Miss uh, Roberts was... Um, she a careless sort of woman and dress and so forth? Certainly not. She was well-groomed and quite correct in everything. Yes, this very correct lady went swimming in a sunsuit. Sunsuit? That's right. Seems like a little thing, maybe, only it's a masculine kind of mistake. You're... You're not suggesting that Neil... I know. They were a devoted brother and sister. No apparent motive at all. Still, Roberts wasn't very definite about where he was around five yesterday. He was calling for Mr. and Mrs. Ford. He brought them over to a party at my home. Yeah, but he could have killed his sister before he went after them. We couldn't have. I, I know he couldn't. You love him very much, don't you, Miss Jermaine? Well, it isn't just that. I, I know because, because I saw Louise alive. Saw her? Yes. She was in her pool swimming just before Neil and the others came. Well, she waved over to me. Oh, and you didn't tell her brother she was home? Why, it didn't occur to me. I thought he knew. Well, in that case, Miss Jermaine, I won't detain you any longer. It must have been an accident, Lieutenant. It does look like it. Anyway, I'll check with the gardener. The gardener? Yes, Robert says he was working around the grounds all afternoon. If the gardener's story checks with yours, well, that'll be it. Good night, Miss Jimmy. It was a bad mistake, wasn't it, Alma? In your murderous haste, you dressed Louise in a sunsuit instead of the bathing suit she'd naturally wear. But it will all be all right, Alma, everything. If only he doesn't know for certain that Louise wasn't swimming in her pool. It seems forever, doesn't it, before the lieutenant is back again. Well, Miss Germain, I couldn't reach the gardener, but I talked to the housekeeper over there, Mrs. Ridley. She says the gardener can't be of much help to us. Oh? Seems that he was driving Mrs. Ridley and your maid Dora to the movies at 5 o'clock. He couldn't have seen Miss Roberts in the pool when you did. I see. Then does that mean... That I'll have to take your word for it? Yes, it does. As far as I can make out, it was an accident, like you said. Sorry to bother you at this late hour, Miss Jermaine, but thought you'd want to know. Of course, it's no bother. I'm so relieved. For Neil's sake. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, a word to you folks who have not yet taken your vacation about an item that will have a lot to do with your driving pleasure. Gasoline. No matter where you travel throughout the Pacific Coast states, from Canada to Mexico, 
you'll find Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Almost 2,000 friendly dealer-owned Signal stations stand ready to serve you and to honor your Signal credit card. And remember, when you power your car with Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, you not only enjoy Signal's good mileage, but also the thing which makes that mileage possible, extra engine efficiency, which naturally means more thrilling performance for your car. So, on your vacation trip, and always, to be sure of the tops in gasoline quality, just remember these two points. One, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. And two, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. And now, Alma, your expensive little world is safe again. Neil's in the clear now free to marry you without any interference from his sister. Yes, Louise Roberts is safely dead, and your whole murderous past with her. It was a desperate few hours, but the absence of motive and your one efficient lie convinced the lieutenant that it was a tragic accident, nothing more. That's why you're surprised the next afternoon to find the lieutenant back at the door again, walking in, sitting down in the luxurious house you thought was yours past all jeopardy. Well, frankly, Lieutenant, I thought we were rid of you. I know. I'm funny. The boys at the department rib me about it. Even when I'm sure, I always have to check. And what are you checking now? The gardener. I finally caught up with him today. But I thought Mrs. Ridley said... That, that part's he... okay. He wasn't near the pool around five yesterday, and he didn't notice the body at ten when he came back. Well, then what's so important? It's very important, because after talking to him, I changed my mind about Miss Roberts' death. It wasn't an accident at all. It was murder. What are you saying? Why'd you lie to me yesterday, Miss Germain? What? Why'd you tell me you saw Louise Roberts in swimming? I did see Drop her. Stop it. You're all finished, Miss Germain. You killed her and put her in that pool yourself. Ah. Thought it'd pass as an accident. Then you saw her brother and his money slipping away when we put the finger on no. him, so you tried to cover by saying you'd seen her in swimming. This is outrageous. I don't know what you're talking about. Why'd you about? lie to me? No one but an idiot would have dived into that pool yesterday afternoon. But why? Because the gardener changed the water in the Roberts pool yesterday, Miss Germain. And at the time you claim you saw Louise Roberts in swimming, there wasn't a drop of water in the pool. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Wednesday at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speed, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Betty Lou Gerson and Tom Collins. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by William Engvik, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>